Neuroplasticity is the brain's infinite ability to reorganize its connections and adapt due to our experiences in life. For over 400 years, the brain was depicted as a machine with parts that were fixed. The previous concept of the brain suggested that neural connections you formed as a child were fixed and could not change. The previous belief also stated that the different areas of the brain which are zoned at birth for different purposes such as hearing or vision could not learn a new function or be overwritten. The idea was that these parts could die or become damaged but that new connections could not be formed or strengthened. We now know this concept is simply wrong. Nerve cells, called neurons, are electrically excitable cells that process and transmit information through electrical and chemical signals. The center of the neuron cell is called the soma or cell body of the neuron. Neurons can form many different connections with each other to form vast neural networks. Neurons without connections are no different than any other cell in the body. What makes neurons unique are their axons and dendrites which allow neurons to communicate with other neurons. Each neuron only has one axon which is shown here by the green arrows. The axon is the elongated fiber that extends from the cell body of one neuron to another and transmits the neural signal. Dendrites are the tree-like extensions at the beginning of a neuron that help increase the surface area of the cell body. A synapse, which is labeled here as the terminal, forms when the axon of one neuron forms a connection with the dendrite extension of another neuron. This is the area where signals will pass from neuron to neuron. Neurons are organized into neural circuits through which neural signals are transferred. Neurons communicate with each other by using chemical signals called neurotransmitters aided by the use of a voltage gradient. The voltage gradient is maintained by ion pumps. A resting neuron is negatively charged inside in relation to the outside and it is said to be polarized. When dendrites receive neurotransmitters from neighboring neurons, ion channels open up and let positive ions depolarize the neuron. This brief surge of positively charged ions inside the neuron, called an action potential, pushes the neurotransmitters down the axon, releasing them into the gap between neurons called the synaptic cleft where they will bind to receptors. The key to lasting structural changes that hardwire new information into the neural pathways is when the neuron which receives the first impulse fires the impulse back to the sending neuron. Further repetition of the same information or experience may cause this, leading to the strengthening of the connections which contain it, or an increase in the number of connections that can access it. There are three categories of plasticity, neurogenesis, synaptic plasticity, and the myelination of axons. Neurogenesis is the birth of a new neuron cell which can migrate to its destination and form connections with other neurons. The birth of 4,000 neurons per second occurs in the first six months post-conception. Adults produce nowhere near this number, but research has shown that the birth of new neurons can occur at any age in the hippocampus of adults. When a person experiences something new, two different types of synaptic plasticity can occur. In the first type, the structure of already existing connections can be altered, making the pathways more efficient. Neurons can strengthen their existing connections to each other in two ways. One way of doing this is by increasing the number of synaptic contacts on each axon. Each neuron only has one axon, but it may branch off in many different directions, forming multiple synaptic contacts. The second way is when synapses change the amount or type of neurotransmitter they are sending to a neighbor cell. A neuron that sends more excitatory neurotransmitters is more likely to make the second neuron fire back in response. The second type of synaptic plasticity involves the formation of a new connection between unconnected neurons which increases synaptic density. As we get older, our neurons remove connections from neurons that are inefficient and strengthen the ones that remain. This is called synaptic pruning. If neurons kept adding connections without removing inefficient ones, neural activity would stop. 
The reason for this is because as action potential moves down the axon, it divides at every branching point. And eventually, if there are too many connections, the signal would become weak or lost altogether. This would eliminate the ability of the second neuron to fire back. Here you can see the final type of plasticity involving the myelination of axons. Some axons are covered with a fatty substance called myelin. The fatty sheaths wrapping the axon function as insulators and improve the speed of the signal. Axon myelination occurs when cells called oligiodendrocytes, shown in green, wrap layers of fatty membrane around the axon. It appears that axons which fire the most become more myelinated over time. Multiples of neural circuits create different cortical maps of organized neurons that work together for specific functions. In the case of someone who is congenitally blind, the visual cortex is waiting for input signals to come, but for whatever reason they never get there. The visual cortex can get retrained to process sensory input and sound. Sensory input from reading braille as well as sound can be redirected to the visual cortex and new connections can be formed. This is the reason why humans who are blind have extraordinary hearing and can pick up sounds that people with normal vision could never hear. The visual cortex was not doing what genetics or nature intended it to do, but it adapted. Attention is the single most determinate factor in neuroplastic change. Dr. Merzench and his colleagues conducted an experiment where rats were trained to seek a reward in response to either tone intensity or tone frequency. All the rats heard the same range of intensity and frequency, but each rat was trained to respond to just one or the other. Tone frequency requires attention to recognize whereas tone intensity is a passive sensory experience. Rats that could get a reward when a specific frequency was heard had twice as many neurons in the auditory field that responded as compared to those trained to intensity. Therefore, attention was necessary for modification of brain structure. The conclusion is that neuroplasticity arises from situations in which organisms pay attention. There are no known cases of structural changes in adult human brains in response to passive experiences. This is the prime example of how the mind changes the brain. If an individual is constantly exposed to new things, performs repetition of that which they already know, and focus their attention, they can harness the full potential of neuroplasticity.